Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Since the Sephora sale is coming up soon, I thought that what I would do is put together a video where I discuss just my favorite products that are available at Sephora. So these are products that I use myself on a regular basis and that I believe that I would repurchase again in the future. I also think that these are products that other people who have mature, sensitive, and dry skin like mine might do well to consider. Consider. Uh, in addition, there are some products that are available at Sephora that I do really like, but where there are other products that are available elsewhere that seem to be pretty direct competitors that in some cases I like at least just as well or in some cases better. So I will be bringing the, those up too when they seem appropriate so that you can have a better idea of comparisons and you can decide on the product that's exactly right for you. So thanks very much for watching and let's get started. So I thought that I would start off by talking about the category that I consider to be probably the most important to me and that is cream concealers and cream foundations. So these are products that are, are often in stick form that I use on a spot basis to help to make my skin look a little bit clearer. So I use this a lot on the uh, dark circles under my eyes. I use it on the red spots on my face or any kind of other discolorations that I might have. And I think that these do a really good job of giving me some coverage and making it look like my skin is uh, healthier and in better shape, but without emphasizing my wrinkles and without making it look like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. So even if I don't put on any other makeup, this is something that I use on an almost daily basis even when I'm not really going anywhere in particular. So one product that I have used very frequently is this Merit uh, Minimalist uh, Skin Complexion Stick. So uh, this is available in uh, uh, a, a variety of shades, but not really as many as I would like. So the one negative that I have about this product is that I don't feel like this is an exact match for my skin. I feel that uh, there really hasn't been any any perfect match for me when I've gone to Sephora and, and, and swatched the, the colors. And I do that almost every time I go to Sephora because I'm a little perplexed that, that there's no perfect shade for me. But, but I do think it's the case that when I use it on my skin and blend it in, it pretty much disappears and you can't see it. So maybe it's not so important that it be an exact match. I have had this for almost a year and there's still this much left of it and I use it uh, at least several times a week and now they are offering for the same price 1.7 times as much product so if you're looking for a good value I think this is a pretty good value. Now another product that I use on a regular basis is a, con a corrector stick under my eyes. So under my eyes I, I do have a good bit of discoloration and what I have found is that if I use a pink or pinkish peach uh, corrector under my eyes then that, there, that way I don't need to use as much foundation or as much concealer under my eyes and therefore it looks a lot more natural and doesn't emphasize my wrinkles enough. So one of the corrector sticks that I really like is this one from Bobbi Brown. Uh, this one is uh, available in the shade Light Bisque, which is sort of a pinkish peach shade, and it really just kind of disappears under my eyes. I like this one especially because I don't have to sharpen it, it just winds up. I've used this uh, quite, a, quite a bit over the course of a year and it, there's still some left in here. Uh, I just purchased a new stick, so I do really like this one. Uh, the competitor for this is the new company that Bobbi Brown herself runs, which is Jones Road. And they have, uh, in their face pencils line, they have a number of products that they don't really draw much attention to, but which are correctors sticks. So the one that I use in that line is number six and I do really like that one but it does have to be sharpened so that's a, a negative and you do have to buy $85 worth of stuff from Jones Road in order to get free shipping so uh, that's a negative for some people that aren't necessarily interested in buying that many products from that company right off the bat and you can't try it out in advance whereas the, the Bobbi Brown sticks are available right in the store. So if you do have issues in, in terms of dark circles under your eyes or other discoloration on your face, then I think that this is a really good product to experiment with at the Sephora store if they stock it at your store. 
Now another product from Bobbi Brown that I still use is the foundation stick. So there's a, Bobbi Brown does have a concealer stick that's almost exactly the same as the corrector stick, but that's available in more neutral uh, skin type colors. I have used that as well, and I've gotten a lot of use out of the one that I purchased. But when I really take a look at how I'm looking, I feel like some of these other products are better in terms of not emphasizing my wrinkles. So I have moved uh, more towards just using this foundation stick from Bobbi Brown or else the face pencils or the Merit product. So this product is available, I think it's like 52 shades or something. Uh, so it's a lot of shades, so hopefully you can get a good match. The unfortunate part is that not all of those shades are available from Sephora. They only have a small selection. So that's a little bit weird, but I think that the good part is that if you have a Sephora near you that uh, stocks the shades, that you could go to the store and try on the products and see if there's one that is a good match. If not, then I would suggest uh, talking to one of the online uh, makeup artists from Bobbi Brown and sending them a picture of yourself and asking them what color sh what color they think would be good for you because that's what I did myself and I thought that those people were terrific so I would highly recommend the makeup artist from the Bobbi Brown company and Bobbi Brown does have very frequent sales these days like 25% off and it, those sales seem to come up pretty often so if you can't get the product at Sephora then it's not like a, it's not going to be available to you the shade that I have is Warm Ivory and I think that this product really does just uh, it can be used either as foundation or as a concealer and it just really disappears into my skin I can build it up if I need a little bit more it's very similar to the Westman Atelier complexion uh, stick that everybody talks about but I feel that this one has been much better for me in terms of not exacerbating the look of the wrinkles around my eyes. And that is really an important factor for me. Um, I think that the, the Westman Atelier stick is very nice uh, and it doesn't have silicones in it. Uh, this And this one has a small amount of silicone in it. This one also does have a small amount of talc in it. And I don't necessarily consider that to be a problem in a cream product because the main reason that talc is an issue is because it might be contaminated with asbestos and if it's a powder product like like baby powder that you might breathe some of it in and if you did that every day over a long period of time it might cause lung damage. In this case even if the, the talcum powder is uh, contaminated with asbestos that would be inside this cream product, then I think that the likelihood of that is it's fairly low anyway. And I've, I've not had any problem with this product irritating my face. I've had really good experiences with it. Now another product that I think works similarly that is an even better value because it's, it's not very expensive at all is the Stretch Concealer from Glossier. So this is now available in Sephora. So I think that uh, I believe all of the Sephora stores have Glossier uh, available to take a look at in the stores. And I am really surprised every time I get this product out and put it on my face how well it disappears into my skin and how, how good it it looks on my mature skin. So I think that this is a, another really underrated product that's available at uh, Sephora that would be worth looking at. And again, uh, Glossier and Bobbi Brown are both lines that for the most part, I'm not very uh, happy with most of their products. I think that they have a lot of ingredients in them that I don't want on my skin and that does cause me to re that do cause me to react. And so uh, those are lines that I don't always pay as much attention to as uh, I otherwise would because most of the stuff in them I'm not going to be using. But in terms of the, the foundation stick and this little pot concealer, I think these are terrific. So now let's move on to liquid foundations and uh, since we started, since we were just talking about the Glossier uh, concealer, let's also talk about the Glossier foundation. So this is called the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint, and this is a very thin foundation, and it's based on cyclic, cyclic silicone. So that could be something that some people uh, would not be very enthusiastic about. It's not. That's one of the reasons that the line is not clean at Sephora. It wouldn't qualify as clean at Credo. But I have had no problems at all with this product 
irritating my skin. And I think that on my more mature skin, this has been a really good product, that it does not emphasize my wrinkles at all, that it's, it's very thin, but it does provide a little bit of coverage. And in terms of the texture of my skin, I think that it makes it uh, look considerably nicer and a little bit more youthful and a little bit more uh, hydrated. Uh, there used to be on the Glossier website that by far the, the most popular review in terms of the number of likes was by a woman who was in her 70s who said that she had tried this product and that she had really, really liked it. And I, I totally agree with that. I think that I, I am very happy with how I look when I put this product on. Now, it doesn't offer much coverage, so you will have to use, if you, if you have coverage issues, uh, things uh, like concealers to add to the coverage. Uh, but in terms of providing a nice look to the, the skin, and I think it's, it looks very nice. So if you want a foundation that is very thin and uh, but offers a bit more coverage, then I would suggest thinking about the House Labs Triclone Foundation. So this is a product that's made in Korea, and I think that it offers a, a substantial amount of coverage on the face without emphasizing wrinkles. It does have a lot of silicones in it, although it's, it doesn't have any cyclic silicones in it, so it qualifies as clean at Sephora. That's what I have on today. And I think that uh, compared to a lot of times when I look in the monitor at uh, how my face is looking, I think my wrinkles are looking a lot better with this product today. And in general, I really like uh, this whole line. Now, the downside of this line is that choosing a shade in this line is virtually impossible. So the, the problem is that they have chosen to use a really screwy color system that is similar to the MAC color system, where they are defining warm as being uh, pink, and they're defining cool as being yellow. So this is pretty much opposite from every other brand of makeup on the market except for MAC. So that's the first problem. But then even if you take that into consideration, when I've spent a lot of time looking at the colors, that doesn't necessarily allow you to pick the right color either. So in my case, uh, I have a I ended up with a, spending a lot of time at Sephora swatching things, and I ended up with 100 as, as the best match for me, and I think that it, it makes a lot of sense. It even says that it's a peach uh, undertone and a light color, and I think that my skin definitely does better when I can find a foundation that, that's leaning peach rather than leaning yellow or pink uh, or neutral. But I do think that uh, you're going to have a hard time uh, figuring out uh, what foundation shade to choose if you only look on the website. Their, their quiz was actually quite good, and it, that actually was quite predictive in terms of what foundation shade for me to choose. So, but in, so that could be one thing to try, but I would really suggest going to the store and swatching before making a decision. But if you can get the right shade, and they have so many shades that I think most people, even if they have like olive skin, will be able to find a good shade. I think this is a very nice foundation and I've been very happy with it. Now, another foundation that I did a whole video on is the new Surreal Skin Foundation that's uh, makeup by Mario. This foundation, I think, uh, really does make older skin look younger. And the reason is less because it's not emphasizing wrinkles, although I, I don't think it emphasizes wrinkles very much. But I also think that somehow it creates like a little bit of a look of padding on the skin. So as women get older, the, the fat pads under the skin, they tend to really disintegrate. So at age 40, they're not too bad, but by the time you get to age 50 or 60, they really start to almost disappear. And then you start to get a kind of a feeling of gauntness on the face where there's just uh, too much contouring going on and you really just have skin that's on top of bones. And what I feel like this product and jo the Jones Road, what the foundation both do is to create a feeling that there's just a little bit more plumpness to the skin. 
I feel like uh, it hasn't been bad for my skin at all and it does look good on me. The problem with this is that somehow they don't really have a good shade for me and I think that there, a lot of people don't seem to have a really good shade for this foundation. So this product is a 2N, which is a little too light for me. And if I go to the next shade up, it almost looks olive. And then the one after that is too dark. The next one that is uh, 4C, and that's for cool, but my skin is not cool at all. And that foundation does not look cool. So I don't quite understand what kind of color system they're using either. It, it's more similar to the MAC system, but it's not even really consistent with that. It's just, it uh, seems almost designed to be confusing. So again, if you're going to um, think about buying this, then I would suggest going to the Sephora store and swatching all the colors there. Uh, I think I can get a perfect match if, in addition to this bottle, I go buy uh, the number 4C from them and then use a little bit of each one every time I put on the foundation. And I like this enough that I'll probably go do this. I've been I've been experimenting with mixing this with some of the other foundations in my collection to see how it works. And it works fine, but I think that uh, having just this foundation for occasions when I want to look really nice uh, would be a nice thing. So I think it might be worth buying uh, the second foundation shade for me. Um, so that, that suggests that I really like it because I don't think I've ever done that in my life, bought more than one foundation shade in order to get a good match. Usually it's not worth it. So those are all what I would more consider to be serious foundations. So I don't want to put silicone on my face every day because I don't feel like it's that great for my skin to have silicone on it all the time. I don't think that the silicone itself is irritating, but I think that silicone tends to create a pretty good barrier on my face that's almost like a saran wrap and therefore that uh, my skin not having a chance to breathe and slough off dead skin cells and sweat, I mean not literally breathe, but uh, I think that that's really not that great for it. So more, more regularly I either wear a cream foundation uh, on a spot basis or I will wear what I consider to be sort of a more casual foundation. So the casual foundations that I have, the first one is this Rose Incorporated Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. Uh, so this is very similar to the um, Liquid Minerals product that Jane Iredale uh, is now discontinuing, and it's av but it's available in, in darker shades as well as uh, just for people with light skin. And I have been very happy with this product. I think that it, it gives me a very natural look. It feels good on my skin, but it doesn't feel like I've got a, a permanent barrier on my skin. It doesn't feel like uh, it's emphasizing my wrinkles at all. It looks pretty, but it's light. So I don't feel like it's, it's uh, changing the look very much. And I feel like if I go out, it doesn't look like I've got makeup on. And then in terms of foundations that have sunscreen in them, I would say that uh, my favorite is still the, the Kosas Revealer Foundation. I'm not alone in this. This has become very popular and awfully a lot of people really, really like this one and I am one of them. Uh, this has a lot of hydrating type ingredients in it, so uh, I, it's pretty good for the skin and uh, it came out about a year ago. I feel like this has held up really well for me. It's still working fine. And I have a lot of different sunscreen foundations and I'm going to be doing short videos on all of those. And so uh, I think that many of them are okay. I think that the, um, the Say uh, Slip Tint is pretty good. I think that the uh, Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue one is not too bad. But in terms of the products that I think have really worked well for me and that I would buy again that have sunscreen in them, I like this one. I think this is nice. So next I'd like to talk about liquid concealers. And I think that what I have found is that so far anyway, the liquid concealers that I have been using recently have not really been that good for use on my skin, on my face. So I don't really like the way they look on my under eyes. I don't even really like the way that they look on the redness around my nose. I, think, I really think I'm doing better with cream foundations for those things. So I think that's part of getting older is that you kind of have to start adopting uh, different kinds of formulas. However, I 
I do have a couple of concealers that I have been very happy with as eyelid primers. So what I have found is that as I've gotten older that the area above my eyes really seems to benefit from my putting on a primer, um, largely because it's starting to look discolored, but it also kind of looks um, overly light in certain areas and so I feel like it's just not uh, really being that attractive that the darkness is not a dark attractiveness and that the light part like in here it tends to uh, protrude a bit and to it acts more like a highlighter and that that's drawing attention away from my eyes themselves and therefore if I put on something that's a bit darker that's more you know like a darker flesh tone uh, on that whole area there, that my eyes in general will just look a lot nicer. So I have tried a, a variety of products that are supposed to be eyelid primers and most of them are clear and most of the ones that aren't clear are annoying to my eyes or just most eyelid primers in general tend to have problematic ingredients in them. So I started experimenting with some con liquid concealers there and uh, these two have worked really, really well for me. So the one that I've been using recently has been the Say. Uh, I think it's Hydra Beam Concealer or something like that. Now this is a product that I definitely wouldn't want to use under my eyes because it's not very thick, it doesn't provide a lot of coverage, and it does provide a little bit of like a highlight, and I don't really feel like I need to be highlighting this area under my eyes. I would rather be uh, distracting attention away from it. But if I put it on my eyelids, I think it works out really well. It's hydrating, it looks pretty, there's just a little bit of a sheen, it serves as a nice base for eyeshadow and it seems to last for, for quite a while. It helps my eyeshadow last uh, quite a bit longer if I'm using either powder shadow or cream shadows. So I've really liked that. Uh, the one that I was using before I got the same one is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. So this one is very, very popular. Um, for a variety of uses by many people. As liquid concealers go, this one is actually not too bad on my face in general, but I still feel like uh, the best use for it is on uh, the area above my eyes. Now there has been some bad publicity recently suggesting that if you uh, let this product sit around too long, it can go bad, maybe it could have mold growing in it, it can become discolored. It only has a six month shelf life. So this is a product, it doesn't have a lot of uh, preservatives in it, so if you're going to buy it, then you should probably just be using this on a day-to-day -day basis and not plan to keep it forever. And I feel like I've got, I got more than six months of use out of it, and I'll probably buy it again. They do have small tubes available in some of the shades, and I think those are only like $15 or something like that, so that would be a, a good deal if you wanted to buy only a small amount of it and give it a try or replace it on a regular basis. But in any case, I think that compared to um, all the other options that I've found, these products have worked really, really well above my eyes, and I have very, very sensitive eyes, especially in terms of my eyelid area, and the fact that neither of these products irritated my eyes at all, even if I'm using them every day, I think says something really good about the products. So I'm I'm kind of glad they don't have a lot of preservatives in them, even if I need to replace them on a more frequent basis. Now for setting powder, I'm not original with regard to this either. I really like this Kosas powder. Uh, so this is called Cloud Set. I have this in the color Feathery, which is I think a, a little bit darker than my skin, but I think that it's worked really, really well for me. I feel like it's hard to explain why I like this powder, but really, uh, no matter what I do in terms of uh, where I put it on my face uh, or what my issues are, I think it just really disappears into my face and resolves all the problem without any issues at all. So it's a little hydrating. It's a, a little, it's very finely milled, I think. So I think that that's a good part of it. And I think that the, the ingredient list is, it doesn't contain things like cornstarch in it, which would uh, suck up all the oil in my skin. It just does a very nice job of putting a, a pretty finish on my skin that works with pretty much all the, any kind of makeup that I have used. And so it's, it's probably not the powder that I think is ideal if I'm out walking in the summer and I want something so that my face doesn't sweat as much. That would not be the use for this powder. That would be a powder that contained more cornstarch. And I'm gonna experiment with more of those powders 
over the, the summer months. But in terms of a finishing powder to put on top of whatever kind of makeup I have, I think this one has been terrific. Now, another product from Kosas that I really like, and I'm not alone in this one either, are the eyebrow gels and the brow pencils. So for me, I don't feel like I need a, a eyebrow gel that's clear that's going to set my brows because I have very, very few eyebrow hairs to begin with, and most of them are very, very light. And instead, what I need is a tinted brow gel that will coat the hairs that I have and make them look like they're real hairs that actually have some color. And what I do feel like is I don't have enough hair, so therefore I need to be using a brow pencil as well as the brow gel. And if I do that, then I think that it gives a fairly natural look that does a, a that's really important in terms of giving my face some structure and uh, not making me look quite so uh, older or you know, not having eyebrows is associated with like uh, thyroid disease. So putting them back in sort of gives a feeling of health back to the, the face as well. Uh, in terms of the, the colors, I think that uh, Kosas has a lot of different colors of brow gel and brow pencils. And so therefore that's really important. Uh, the color that I have is the taupe, which is a light uh, neutral shade. So I think that that's really important because especially as my hair has gotten grayer, if I put something that's reddish on my brows, it kind of looks like it's clashing with both my natural hair color and with the gray. So I really do like these products. Um, more recently, like just a couple of months ago, Jane Iredale brought out some new shades in their eyebrow pencil and eyebrow gels. And I really like that product, maybe even a bit more now that there's a proper shade for me in that line. So I might be more inclined to buy those the Jane Iredale products instead, uh, but these Kosas products are still very good. And uh, the other product that I really like that's a totally different sort of product is from Jones Road. So these, th those pencils actually, I don't need to use a brow gel, that there's something about them. They have little fibers in the pencils and they're sharpenable pencil. And they're a little bit uh, waxy. And somehow when I put this on my eyebrows, I can put it on in like five seconds. And then it looks like it's passably good and I don't need to put anything else on it. So I do use that a lot and I, I really do like the way I look. And I think that especially for someone that doesn't have any eyebrows at all, that that would be by far my best uh, suggestion is those Jones Road eyebrow pencils. But for everyday use, and especially if you don't want to order from the Jane Iredale site, uh, I think that this is a really, these Kosas products are really terrific. And the fact that they have so many colors means that most people are going to be able to find the right shade for them, I think. So next let's talk about eyeliners. And that has been a really difficult product category for me because most of the products on the market irritate my eyes and my eyes do, uh, they are very, very sensitive, uh, much more so than the rest of my face. And unfortunately, most of the eyeliner pencils that are considered to be quote unquote clean beauty, they actually have cottonseed oil in them. And this is a problem because cottonseed oil tends to be very, very heavily contaminated with agricultural chemicals and especially glyphosate. And my feeling about this is that if a product has even a little bit of cottonseed oil in it, that the glyphosate in it is uh, one of the things that's really irritating my eyes uh, by really changing the microbiome of the eyes so by killing off the good bacteria and allowing bad fungus or bad mold to have more of an opportunity to grow. And I almost lost my eye at one point to what I now think was probably a fungal infection. So I don't like that idea in theory, but mostly I just can't wear those eye pencils without at the end of the day feeling like uh, my eyes really are hurting and um, irritated. So I have spent a lot of time trying out a variety of different eye pencils and like 30 different ones. And some of the ones that are uh, considered to be not clean, like the Bobbi Brown gel eyeliner pencils, those are actually not worked too bad for me. But the one that I'm really liking the most at present are the ones from Calare. So this comes in three shades and it's in a, this is not a wooden pencil, it's a plastic pencil, but it's sharpenable. 
and it doesn't have any uh, cottonseed oil in it and the ingredient list looks really clean to me but it's waterproof and it goes on super easily it's available in three shades black brown and blue and I think this has worked really well for me so this is my favorite at this point and I have all three colors and I've been really happy with all three colors so I of the things that are available at Sephora, certainly, I think that this could be a good choice. And now let's talk mascara. And again, mascara is a category that's kind of difficult for me because my eyes are so sensitive that many of the products on the market, including ones that consider themselves to be clean, have been irritating to my eyes. But the ones that have worked for me, uh, first of all, I, I tend to prefer a tubing mascara because it goes on more easily and it uh, comes off more easily just with warm water. Uh, the issue with tubing mascaras is they tend to give more of a natural look rather than a really dramatic look. So I think that's really good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't really want my eyes to look like they have that spider look uh, to them. But for some people, that's not what they're looking for. But in terms of the tubing mascaras that I have tried, the ones that I have liked that seem almost identical to me in terms of their performance is the Merit product and the Calorie product. Uh, I think that both of these have worked really well for me. The Calorie one is available in a small size as well as this large tube. And I think that that's good because I like to change my mascaras as, as frequently as possible because I don't want there to be any chance that there's gonna be some kind of contamination in them, particularly when we're talking about clean mascaras that have fewer preservatives in them. I think that's really important. But both of these have worked really well for me and I haven't had issues with either one of those. Uh, in terms of mascaras that are more traditional mascaras that might create more of a dramatic look, I will join the crowd and say that I really like this Tower 28 mascara. You know, it's really surprising that this mascara is both such a high performance mascara and that it is one of the few mascaras out there that hasn't irritated my eyes at all. I've been very happy with this. I also do like the RMS mascara that might just be available online through Sephora. RMS had a number of bad mascaras over the years, but I think that about a year or maybe 18 months ago or so, they came out with the new mascara that's that's currently their mainstay. And I think that one's been terrific. It's performed really well for me. It's gone on really easily. And I haven't experienced any irritation from it. Uh, I think the same mascara is also not too bad. It's called Mascara 101. And that one's not been uh, too irritating for me at all. So that could be another option that's available in the store. But I do really like this Tower 28 mascara. And uh, I, uh, I don't mind using it at all. And that's saying a lot for me. Now, I am a fan of eyeshadow sticks, and I recently did a video on the new Victoria Beckham eyeshadow sticks. So if you feel like placing an order from Victoria Beckham, then I think that her sticks are very good. But there aren't that many colors, and uh, you may not want to be spending that much money on them. Uh, the, so you might also want to be considering the Laura Mercier sticks, which I also have found to be very good. Now, the, the Laura Mercier sticks and the Bobbi Brown sticks are very similar to one another. The problem that I have with the Bobbi Brown sticks is that the company is not revealing information on which of their sticks include aluminum powder. And I find aluminum powder to be really irritating to my eyes, and it's also something that I don't really want to be using from a kind of a theoretical perspective. This is an ingredient that uh, EWG thinks is especially problematic, and I would say that I really don't really want uh, something that toxic put right on top of my eyes. So I try to avoid anything that has aluminum powder in it. The good thing about the Laura Mercier sticks is that they will list for each stick exactly what the ingredients are and without using that may contain uh, category that uh, lumps everything all together. And almost all of the products, uh, almost all of the colors for Laura Mercier do not have aluminum powder in them from what I have seen. And I think this performs just as well or, or pretty much just as well as the Bobbi Brown sticks. So I feel really good about uh, about these products because they're so easy to put on and I don't really have to spend any effort and I can uh, have a pretty and uh, 
easygoing look uh, right on top of my eyes in about uh, three seconds per eye, which is kind of all that I want to be spending on it. So I would, uh, I'm going to look at some more of these sticks myself and see if there's any more that I want to pick up because I think they're very nice. Now let's talk a little bit about cheek products. And uh, well, let's start out with bronzers. So the bronzer that I feel really, really good about and that I, I feel that most people would probably have a good experience with is the House Labs Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. The formula for this is really, really good. It goes on really easily. Uh, it's very uh, nice powder with a uh, some positive ingredients in it. It has arnica in it and some hydration ingredients. So I feel like it's really good for my skin and it looks really good on my skin. This is the one bronzer line that has many different shades of bronzer and that you can try on in the store and I think that that's really important with bronzers that it really should not look like it's clashing with your skin it should just look like it's a darkened version of your skin and therefore the fact that there are so many colors available at Sephora to try out is a really positive thing now unfortunately uh, again they're using this confusing color system so just keep in mind that when they say warm they say that something is light warm that actually means that it's light and it has red in it and if it's light and cool then that means that it's light and it's golden so you can get really confused and end up uh, being very frustrated or buying the wrong product if you don't keep that in mind but I do think that uh, you probably can find a good shade for you because they do have so many of them and it is such a good formula so in terms of blush, I have a couple of choices that are sold at Sephora that I do really like. Uh, the first one is the Merit line of uh, gel blushes. They're, uh, so they're almost uh, translucent. So this is a new shade uh, that they put out, which is called a Prey, which is a lot more pink than what I usually wear. But again, it's it has this transparency to it that allows me to put a little bit of it on my cheeks and have it look pretty and just give me a, a tiny little bit of a pop of color of something that I don't uh, usually wear. So I really do like these blushes. They're, they're kind of similar to the Glossier Cloud Paints or the uh, Say Do blushes, and those could be good choices too. I think I like the Merit both, but any of those products, which are all from Sephora, could be uh, choices. And then what we have here on the bottom is the um, Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks Blush, and this is in the shade uh, Doo Doo, which is a uh, it's a brighter shade, but it also has a less of a translucent look to it. It looks a little bit more thick. So if you put it on your skin, uh, it doesn't it doesn't have as much of a see-through thing. So I've only worn that a few times, but I do have a few other colors of this uh, Westman Atelier blush that I do really like. Uh, Chouchette, I need to find out what I did with that uh, blush stick. It's around here somewhere. But I think that uh, both of these are really nice products and I've gotten a whole lot of use out of them. So uh, the, the, the Westman Atelier one's pretty expensive, but I think it's worth it. It's a, one of their better products and uh, a very, the colors are all very, very pretty. And the blush that I am really liking that's a powder blush right now is the new RMS blushes. They came out a little less than a year ago, I think. And they are called the Redimension Hydro Powder Blush. And this is, this is a shade that's called Maiden's Blush. And I think that this shade looks really kind of odd in the container. But when I put it on my skin, I think it's super pretty. And I think that I would like to try a few more of these blush colors. Uh, the, the Sephora does not have RMS in the store, so I haven't been able to try them out. But there are a number of really pretty colors, and I really like the way this product performs. It does have a little bit of a shimmer to it, but it really looks very natural on my skin. And I think it's, it's been a, a very nicely performing product. And it's not just a clean product from RMS. It's actually a product that I think compares with any other blush that I have tried. And then if we want to go to Westman Atelier and really talk about a splurge, the one that I would uh, consider buying again and that I'm not sorry at all that I spent the money on even though it's quite expensive 
is the uh, Super Loaded Tinted Highlighter. And I have this in the color Peau de Peche. And I think that it just adds um, a little bit of just such refined highlights to my skin that it just makes me look a little bit healthier and a little bit prettier without drawing any attention to itself at all. Now, I think this is a good color. Uh, they also have one that is the um, a bronze type color, which I, a peau de soleil is what it's called. So it's supposed to be a summertime color. So I'm really interested in that one as well. Uh, there are two more shades, one of which is available at Sephora. So peau de rose is a, a pink color, but it has a lot of apparently like sparkle in it or glitter. So uh, that would be a different look. That would actually be a, a more of an obvious highlight if it has that glitter in it. And then there's one more shade that uh, Westman Atelier makes, which is Peau de Santé, which they actually just made for Goop. So you can buy that on the Goop website. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is a fan of that color. And then you can also buy it on the Westman Atelier website, but not at Sephora. But I think that uh, probably Peau de Peau de Passion, Peau de Soleil seem to be getting really good reviews and they, they both give me this kind of natural uh, but healthy, pretty look that uh, I think is the reason that I spent the money. And now we'll move into lipsticks and I am happy to say that two of the uh, my very favorite lipstick brands are both available at Sephora now. So one of these is the Merit Lipsticks and I did a video a while back on Merit while I, where I swatched all the colors of these lipsticks because I have all of them because I like it them so much and I think they all look pretty good on me. I like these because they really feel like a lip balm but they give me much more of a look of a lip stick uh, and that they look actually you know very nice on and it's it's hard for me to mess up most of the colors are kind of on the the mucky color so even if they're a little bit on the bright side they don't look like they're um, a really obvious lipstick shade and I really like that about them I think that they've done a really good job with those colors and the other line of lipsticks that I really like are the Glossier Ultra Lips now I really really hate the Generation G lipsticks so uh, I would not suggest looking at those at all but these Ultra Lips these have been really terrific for me and they are available in a variety of colors so some of them are uh, almost translucent and then others of them are very very bright so this one uh, which is um, called Coupe, I think, is kind of an orange color, for instance. But all of them ne nevertheless look really good on me. They're very hydrating, they're lightweight, they feel good on my lips, and I really have enjoyed wearing those very much. So if you look at the end of my Glossier video, I swatch all of those lipsticks as well because I have all of them, and I feel really good about uh, those. So if you can find a shade that you like, and now that now that Glossier is available at Sephora, you can go in and swatch them, which is a really nice thing. And I would recommend both of these lines of lipsticks very much as just kind of an everyday, uh, comfortable lipstick that I have really enjoyed wearing. I also am not much of a lip gloss person at all, but I do really like these lip oils from Merit. So uh, this one is in the color Marrakesh, and I think that in terms of it just giving a little bit of a gloss to my lips, I think it's, it's very nice. It goes on really easily. I'll put just a tiny bit over this. Um, but it just feels good, and uh, it certainly does not feel like most lip glosses. It doesn't feel sticky. It doesn't feel overly shiny. It just feels nourishing and like a nice thing to put on my lips. And in terms of matte lipsticks, I just did a whole video on matte lipsticks. And the ones that came up towards the top were first the Elisa Eldridge ones, but then number two and number three, I would say, are available at Sephora. So that would be the Say Lip Blurs, which I think are, these are a little lipsticks, so they're not all that expensive. And I think they're really pretty. They come in a variety of different shades. I'd like to have one or two more. And these NARS Power Matte Lipsticks, which are more expensive, they're a little bit larger. I think they're a lot like the Say Lipsticks. And uh, I think these are, they're available in a wide variety of colors. The packaging is a little more 
uh, distinctive, but I have really enjoyed this one as well. I only have so far this color Freebird, which is their lightest and uh, least saturated color. So I'm interested in getting some more of these, but I so far I really like this one. And neither of these products have any flavor to them. They both taste really good to me. They both feel good. The ingredients list looks good. I'm really happy that NARS is becoming a brand that has uh, cleaner products uh, pretty reliably now in terms of their more recent uh, releases. So I have really enjoyed using this product as well. But it's a little on the pricey side, and you can almost buy a Lisa Eldridge lipstick for the price that you uh, pay for this NARS lipstick. And I'd, I'd rather have the Lisa Eldridge one. So now let's take a little detour into products that I have not been uh, using for that long, but that I really, really like. Uh, so starting out, I have two of these lipsticks from Pat McGrath. One is a matte lipstick, and one is a satin lipstick. And both of these have reasonably clean ingredient lists, and they both feel really good to me, and they both performed surprisingly well. So I have been very happy with these. Again, these are these are not cheap lipsticks, and maybe I would prefer to get uh, the Lisa Eldridge ones. I would say I would prefer to get the Lisa Eldridge ones. But nonetheless, I feel really, really good about these lipsticks, and I have uh, really enjoyed wearing them. And that's actually what I am wearing today is this... Uh, the Satin Pat McGrath Lipstick in the color Patalica, I think, uh, which I think is really pretty, especially if you can try out these lipsticks in the store and see if you like them. I would not overlook them because I am feeling really good about them at this point. And then even though this is by no means clean beauty, I decided that I like those lipsticks so much that I would finally give in and try one of these Pat McGrath palettes. So in the past, I was always uh, totally uninterested in buying Pat McGrath palettes because they all contained at least one or two shades that had aluminum powder in them. And I thought that I didn't want to have to avoid uh, particular shades in the palette just because of the aluminum powder. But her most recent Mothership palette, which is Mothership 10, uh, which I think is called Moonlit Seduction, maybe. This one does not have any aluminum powder in it. Now some of the shades do have talc in them, so if you're concerned about talc, then this would not be a good product to buy. And if you're concerned about uh, looking too shiny and sparkly, then this would not be a good product to buy because it does have a lot of kind of shiny shades to it. But I have kind of enjoyed using this palette. I think that it uh, is, makes it very easy to create a really pretty kind of modern eyeshadow look that, that doesn't look as dramatic or uh, ostentatious as I might have thought. And uh, I think it's really, uh, they're very good quality products, and I would be interested in maybe getting uh, some more little palettes from them. But in any case, when I looked at the ingredients, all the palettes that she has released over the past year or so, none of them have had any aluminum powder in them. So that opens up a whole window for me as long as I feel like I'm, I'm not using it real often and I'm not breathing in much of this in case there's an asbestos contamination. But I, I think the risk of that is pretty low and I've felt good about it so far anyway in terms of it not irritating my eyes. In terms of makeup brushes, there are a few brands at Sephora that uh, might be worth considering. Uh, the, the Sephora Pro line um, is a, a pretty good quality, I think. Uh, this is a bronzer brush. It's huge, and I really have enjoyed using it. This is brush number 80. So, and I think that the, for the Sephora sale, that the Sephora items are on a particularly good sale, like a much bigger percentage off, something like 30% off, I think, compared to all the other items in the store. So it, if you're interested in a brush like this, this could be a good time for it. I think that also this little Merit brush is a very nice brush to blend foundation stick into the skin, and it's not real expensive. And I think these Say brushes have been terrific for me. So I talked about these in my Say video, but there's a bronzer brush that I also have used for things like blush. There is a little foundation brush that has somewhat longer um, bristles. It's a lot like this Merit brush, I think and uh, with kind of the soft 
bristles that uh, just do a, a nice job of buffing. And then there's this little powder brush. And I think all of those have been really good and they're not very expensive, so I could definitely recommend those to people. And then in terms of skincare, uh, I don't feel like there's that many skincare brands at Sephora that I'm really excited about, but there are a few. I really, really do like The Outset. Uh, the Outset is by Scarlett Johansson. And the idea with these products is that they are designed that if your skin gets messed up, that they should be able to bring your skin back into balance. And I do think that they've done this very well for me. I think that they have very clean in ingredients lists in terms of the kinds of things that really irritate my skin. There's no fragrance of any kind, and they have performed really well for me. So I'm really impressed with this line. I think it's been highly underestimated, and I think this would be a good time to pick it up, especially if you have a good discount. Uh, the Bare Minerals Skin Longevity Serum. This is something that I use over and over again. I go through a bottle of this at least every couple months. I use a little squirt of it almost every day on my skin. I think I really like it because it has a, a, some fermented ingredients in it that are good for my skin in terms of restoring the microbiome of my skin. It does have some problematic ingredients in it. I'm kind of surprised at this point that I'm able to tolerate it, but my skin does really seem to like it. I wouldn't suggest any of the other skincare products that Bare Minerals makes. But this product I personally have done well with, so it might be worth considering at least trying a little sample of the product. I think Sephora will give you a, a Sephora store will give you a sample of a skincare product to try out. And I think this one's been very nice for me and uh, contributed a lot to my skin looking better. And then Alpine Beauty is another line that I like. Uh, this is a line that seems to be more kind of performance oriented. So each product from them uh, has a goal of uh, reducing wrinkles or being, having a lot of vitamin C in it or uh, a lot of AHAs in it. So uh, if you're looking for something that uh, doesn't have a lot of problematic laboratory-made chemicals, that doesn't have fragrances in it, that doesn't have any kind of, uh, probably it's, it does have some botanicals in it, but they don't seem to be botanicals that have irritated my skin, and my skin's been very sensitive to uh, processed botanicals like essential oils. I think these have been very nice for me. The ones that I personally like are the wild nettle and niacinamide firming serum. So this is mostly like a hydrating serum, and I think that it's it's certainly possible to get one that's less expensive. Uh, I really like the Honest Hydrating Serum. Uh, even the Glossier Hydrating Serum, which is now available at Sephora, that one's actually been fine for me. Uh, this one's a little more expensive, but supposedly it has anti-wrinkle ingredients in it. I don't know if those work or not, but I feel good about putting it on my skin. My skin seems to like it. I also really like this eye cream from Alpine Beauty. So no, this is one of the few eye creams that I have found that has both Bakuchio, which is an anti-wrinkling ingredient, and caffeine in it. And caffeine is good for the puffiness that my eyes uh, tend to have problems with. And this is kind of an expensive eye cream, but I think it's been very nice for my eyes. It hasn't caused any irritation. I think it's been helpful for them in terms of uh, addressing certainly the puffiness and maybe also the wrinkles too. Certainly my wrinkles are starting to look somewhat better after uh, focusing on skincare in general. So I have bought uh, three jars of this, I think, so far, although I got two of them on a good, pretty good discount. So I do feel really good about this product and I can I intend to continue to use this one in the future. Another brand that I feel really good about pretty much across the board based on everything that I've tried so far is Necessaire, but I thought that I'd bring up especially their deodorant. So this deodorant is based on AHAs, so it does not have any kind of uh, aluminum in it. It doesn't have things like essential oils in it or baking soda. Uh, and I found that it works really well for me. It, it doesn't have any fragrance at all in it. And it doesn't keep you from sweating, but it does prevent the sweat from uh, having an odor to it. And it also um, 
as a side bonus, uh, provides some exfoliation of your armpits. So I have really liked this product a lot, and in general I feel good about uh, all the products from this company. This product is very similar to the deodorant from Kosas, but from what I see, Kosas is only selling that deodorant on their own website now. It's not at Sephora. But I think that the Necessaire version is pretty much the same. It's just in a glass container, which I think is kind of nice. In addition, I've been trying out a variety of different shampoos and conditioners, and I do really like the Necessaire shampoo and conditioner. I think that uh, this is uh, has a really good ingredient list. It doesn't have the irritating uh, ingredients that almost all shampoos and conditioners, including ones that you find at the health food store, tend to have in them. But it also does a really good job of even helping to wash the oil out of my hair. So what I've been doing recently is putting oil in my hair prior to shampooing, which makes my hair in much better shape, but it does create a little bit more of a challenge in terms of getting that out of my hair, but also uh, doing it in a way that's very gentle to my hair. And I really like these these particular products for that challenge. And I've also really liked the Honest Shampoo and Conditioner. And those are less expensive than these, so maybe that would make more sense. But these have worked really well for me as well, and I, I might buy them again. And speaking of hair oils that I put in prior to shampooing, I tend to just be using whatever kinds of face oils or body oils that I have that I don't really feel like using up uh, in my hair, and that has worked really well, uh, surprisingly well. But if I want to find something to put directly in my hair that's made for my hair, I've been mostly using this Bondi Boost Elixir hair oil. This is nice. It has a bit of a, a pleasant uh, lavender scent to it. And uh, I think that of the hair designated hair oils that I found, this one is quite good quality and not terribly expensive. And I, I'm kind of interested in buying some more products from Bondi Boost. And then finally, in terms of fragrance, you know, I don't like synthetic fragrance at all, and I've realized that it, it doesn't matter if it's made by Michelle Pfeiffer, it doesn't matter if it claims that it's safer and that you have to have synthetic fragrances in things if you, because it's, people can be allergic to the natural fragrance or because it doesn't matter, it's perfectly safe. I have concluded that all synthetic fragrances are, first of all, annoying to me in terms of not enjoying the smell, and secondly, they annoy my skin, and I'm just not going to do anything with synthetic fragrance at all. But I do kind of like some kinds of natural fragrance. And of the things that are available mainstream, like at Sephora, the one that I've really been liking is from a company that is called Seven Virtues. So what they basically seem to be doing is they will take one uh, essential oil type of ingredient, like jasmine or coconut, and then they will use a lot of uh, processed fragrances, such as uh, linalool or other things like that is sort of a backup. And I think that this is a, allows them to make a, a all natural fragrance in a way that's uh, not uh, terribly expensive and that does have a lot of grounding to it. And I have found that I have liked all of their fragrances uh, quite a bit to the point that I, I don't mind wearing them at all. And I think it's nice to have a little bit of fragrance in my life. So for instance, uh, they have some that's available in a large spray bottle, and then there's some that are, um, this is like a roller ball. Last I checked, this was still in stock at Sephora, but they have a, a little kit where they have almost all of their fragrances in little spray bottles, and I have really uh, enjoyed that a lot. So I'm interested in buying a few more things at the sale myself. So if there are things that are sold at Sephora that you have really liked, that you would like to recommend to the rest of us, then please let us know. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to my channel. And thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. And Coco and I love you very much. Goodbye. Oh, uh, turn this way. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>